So the sun came out, perfect. perfect. Welcome Got back it. to another episode of Cactus Quest. I am your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, I'm gonna be touring a backyard, believe it or not, we're in someone's backyard, and not just anyone. And it gets super hot in here, but I guess they got used to it. Like, whatever plants I keep in here. I opened the door just in the summer, but. My friend Victor, and Victor has an Instagram, Oasis Gardens, you guys need to make sure you follow him, go check him out. He's a, uh, a private collector, dabbles here and there, sells some plants every once in a while when there's an event, and uh, we're gonna be taking a look at his collection, so. So here we are, we're getting ready to walk in. That's the greenhouse. We like a lot of the same stuff. <laughs> we do like a lot of the same stuff. So, I mean. <laughs> I'm a little wide maybe, I don't know why. Why don't you kind of, you, you show me around. What are so, What do you got going on in here? Oh, I love the Ariocarpus. Uh, I started getting a lot of them from, from like I said, from Rob, because he lives so close right here. Right. And, but little by little, I started liking anything that has wire and tubercles. Yeah, like this one right here, dude. Yeah, this was, it's weird because uh, somebody told me about uh, Planta Seca, how they have the, uh, I seen a plant that they had and they told me, and I asked them, where did you get it from? And they, they told me Planta Seca, I started looking at some of them. And they, they pull them out once in a while, all the ones with the white, why the tubercles? Right, right, right. From there. Like, see this one's voracious. That one's from Rob. Oh yeah. This that one is drill. So Rob. this is this is a hot nail. Yeah, hot nail. So explain that a little bit. Yeah, whenever you hurt that growing point, it's gonna create multiple heads. So this one is like that. This one is like that. And I started doing to some of them. It's like this one, see, this this is a drill. It took a while. So you actually take a drill or do you do the hot nail method? Well, I actually took a drill. Okay, so no heat. No heat. I think that heat will work better though because it will, it will, it will like heal the wound, I yeah. guess, right? Solder it. Because when you do it with the drill, it, it stays like a fresh wound, second best What option. is this? This is a uh, Norocactus, Norocactus ubelmanianus. Oh wow! Enormous. Okay. Wow, that's crazy because it does look. It does kind of look like a, a ubelmania. Yeah, and what what I noticed is like, so this one's how it's a little like this is dots, right? Right. And this one is long. They're not dots. They're like a little lo longer. Right. So these ones create crests when I drill them. This one's creating like a crest, so is this one. Oh yeah. So that But like, the ones that were like circle will not create a crest. So that elongated What would you call this? That elongated uh, aerial is uh seems to have yeah, let me kind show of you. a see this one is the one that Oh wow. You know what's funny is this one actually is less enormous as well. It's cause it's is yeah, so it's that the uh, the thorns start coming out when the, they're little, but then as it grows, it, they just drop. Kind of like uh, like a lot of the, I mean, almost 99% of the areocarpus will do that when they're in the seedling stage. At the end of the tubercle, they have little tiny spines. So does Lophophora, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah. And it all disappears. Oh, wow. That is intense. Yeah, I was lucky to win that one, man. Well, Mammalaria the, crucidra. At the Mesa Garden auction. That is unbelievable, dude. I just, um, I just this morning at a coffee shop before I got here, finished up editing the final section of the uh, Oaxaca series. And yeah, that's, that's where, where we from. look at Mammalaria crucidra. Oh, so amazing. Let's see if we get, get in close. See those little cross crosses? That's why it's called crucidra right there. See the little cross? Yeah. So cool. And I would think, you know, they, uh, you would find them in Mexico a lot, but no, you, that's why I was looking for a nursery in Mexico. Maybe, no. Maybe they grow them. No, oh, this is, Yeah, I like that form. It, it, I mean, copy post in the area from uh, uh, Alex. You know Alex? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Black Spines? Yeah, Black Spines, Alex. And 
whenever he tells you a price, decide right and then, because when you come back, <laughs> What about, you, you've seen a lot of copy pores. Have you seen this? Kind of, what, I like how it's blocky. I don't know if you, when I say blocky. I know exactly what you're talking about. The way, yeah, it's very, um, it has very pronounced like tubercles. And uh, kind of square, I, that's what I like about it. And I'm always looking for them because eventually when I grow from sea, I want to be able to make the same type. You know, it almost looks like it, it might have a little, like the, it looks a little like Dio Bada in that, in that sense. It's not, I mean, I, who knows, but it looks a little like it has some of that same form that Dale Bada has. I have one Cinerea hybrid from him and I was really hoping that I might be able to, to get another one. And it just, I just have not yet, I haven't been able to do it. He's, he's hanging on to those things and I don't blame him. This but, is the boobies yeah. or boobs or whatever it's called. Yes. I think it was a type of diffuser. Yeah, that's cool. It's interesting how it's like it's like blue and then sort of almost yellowish on the sides. I think they, they more of a yellow green there. You guys like variegates out there? Who is a variegated fan? Obviously, <laughs> Victor is. Yeah. I, I have two variegated areas that are on their own roots. They're, they're small, but. Are you kind of stockpiling seed right now, or uh, have you started growing from seed? For yet? some reason, yeah, I started growing from seed a little bit, but I mean, it, the stuff that I like, it takes such a long time to grow. That's why you got to get started right yeah, now, man. Yeah, so I already, I mean, I'm... you got the Faro cactus glaucescence going off. Look at all those. Oh yeah, they're about to incoming blooms. You know, I wonder what would happen if you hot nailed one of these, because if you notice, this has longer aerials. This one right here has longer aerials than that one. Those are round, more rounded. I wonder if you would have some likelihood of cresting if you were to do some drilling on that. I imported these ones from Italy when they were smaller and then I kept a couple. Yeah, I've got a couple of these, the Italian ones that, that were coming in. Those were kind of coming, at, coming in during the pandemic and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I kept a couple for myself. But you don't see the... Like he was hot now. I don't know if they grow differently or maybe they, when they were a seedling, they got damaged. It, maybe adding like steroids and really pumping them. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, steroids. like plant hormones and stuff no. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to stimulate plant growth. I mean, there's ways to induce uh, variegation. Like you see a lot of those those astrophytums that come in. Yeah. Like if you if you get an astrophytum and it's like variegated along the ribs and like there there's I'll I'll see if I can find some photos to give but you see, guys an like, example. I used to think that about this too. Oh, this looks kind of induced, but I've been having this for ever, and the new variegation. I mean, the new growth shows variegation. Well, and that I, doesn't that the, I've seen areas that look like that though. Like I've seen variegated areas that'll look like that. Um, there's that one starburst hint tonight that is like insane the whole thing is variegated in crazy candy colors like that but what i'm talking about is those astrophytums and it's a lot of times like the super kabutos and the yeah. asterius where they're like it's like this it doesn't look like okay so if we look at yours right you look at like that's you can see it's got the variegation on the side it's primarily yellow yes. but it's going to continue it's going to keep growing variegated yeah. Whereas a lot of these things, they're all variegated exactly the same way. And it's a chemical, it's, I, don't, I don't know the process, but it's a chemical process um, with steroids and stuff where they are able to induce variegation. But then the plant will grow out of it. So, yeah, yeah. take it or leave it. What's, what's going on over here, bro? Oh, that's a, it, it started riding on me. I, that's a big loss right there. Oh. I mean. Have you? Could try to save it. I mean, you could. That, that's still. Yeah, saveable. that's why I left it right there. Maybe <laughs> hoping for roots. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I think a lot of it has to do with the soil. You know, like just because somebody else is a good grower, sometimes their soil doesn't work to whatever you. Right. Whatever you, your watering type. You know, the, your because I fertilize a lot and I water a lot. And a lot of the stuff that I changed, as soon as I tried to change everything, but it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of plants. Too. So I don't change everything. What is your kind of, what do you have a general soil mix that you use? I, I use a lot of pumice, about 75% pumice. 
and not not too much sand. I know like some of the older girls they use a lot of gritty sand, but that is, it, it takes a while to dry. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. You know, and it works if you don't water as much. Because I like it when because when you take out a plant and then you just shake it, everything just falls off. Which right. It's nice, but it stay for me. It stays a little bit wet too long. Yeah. You know, it's like, but like I said, it depends. You know, you can you can't tell somebody like the the perfect mix because I mean, it's dependent where you live. Or you know, like if you know how some people go complete. Completely, completely unorganic. Yeah, and I can see that works in Thailand, Florida, where it's really humid. But it'll be. Uh, but I don't think you could do com- completely inorganic in California unless you water a lot. Um. Oh, I don't know. You know, like I said, you. you gotta, that's kind of the, that's that's sort of my whole stance with that man. Is it like? You know, I have always, I've gotten a lot of requests to do videos on soil mixes and like all these different things. And there are some general rules that people can follow. You know, I could give some kind of like rough advice for it, but you have to figure out what works for you in your, with your collection, where you grow them and how you do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, if I were to go completely inorganic, to water a lot. I would be watering like every four days. Yeah. Like it, during the hot, I mean, it would be ridiculous. And some people do it. <laughs> I, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So like my, my mix is, the only thing that I have, like my Copia Poas last year, I switched them into um, a fully inorganic mix for the most part. Yeah. But everything else is in about a 75, 25 uh, inorganic to organic mix. And I use that um, that Unigro cactus mix, yeah. which is it's got sand in it, and I don't mind. I, I, I've... You, well, you need something to hold moisture in California, yeah. right? Something, whatever it is. Because I was reading a book from uh, from the guy up in uh, in Thailand, and he said, "Oh, I, I love peat moss, you know. <laughs> Here we hate it, right." But he said over there, they, he wants to use it, but it's too expensive for him to use because he can't find it. So he uses coco coir. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, that's the thing, though, is like I, I was watching, you know, um, videos online of how like dudes in Thailand grow astrophytums. And one of the videos I was watching is like they grow it in pure, they start the seeds in pure peat moss. Yeah. That's... And you're like, I would never do that. But that's here and there it works. So yeah. there's obviously more than one way to skin a cat. So how did you get into all of this, man? Uh, first, it was soft. Like I said, it was a Daniels. I, uh, I, I was looking for a Daniels, Ara- Arabicums, especially Ara- Arabicums and uh, Socotranums. Right. And the so only big fat ones. And at that time, I didn't know that P- Peter grows them, right? Because I wasn't out in the scene where like everybody else is. I right. was just on my own little world and. I didn't know where to find them. I didn't know. I said I went to like one show, but at that time I didn't see it. I was like, where am I gonna go find them? And I started looking at YouTube channels. Everything throw me to Thailand for right. soccer training them. And then I was like, I go, I go to Philippines sometimes because my wife is Filipino. Let me just go to Thailand and go see if I can find, find them. Where, and then I find them, but nobody knows how to ship them. So I gotta figure out now how do I ship them. First, like I said, it was a Daniels. And then, when I was looking for a Daniels, I go look over there, and then they have some very nice cactus. Right. And that's when I started. I picked up. Uh, I picked up this ones there. This one, this one, those two, and this one right here. So the the Asterius Astrophyta Asterius, the yeah. star cactus, was kind of how you started getting from from the Adeniums into the cactus. Yeah. Oh man. So what are some of your um, what are some of your like favorite plants that you got in the collection? If you were gonna run, if there was, if your greenhouse was on fire and you could only grab what you could fit in your hands, what are you, what are you pulling out of here? I like this one because the story behind it. Because this one grew from a from a tubercle. So that's a essentially a leaf propagation yeah. of an areocarpus. Yeah, and I didn't do it, so it was, Rob did it. <laughs> wow. But then when I got it, I mean, you can barely see now. You can see the original. 
Oh yeah. Dude, I remember when I first came here, you showed it to me. It's grown a lot. Yeah, that <laughs> water a lot. <laughs> That's crazy. They, yeah, they don't. I mean, they grow as slow, but I don't think as slow as people think they grow. Well, Retusis is one of the faster of all. Oh yeah, too, maybe you know? maybe that has a lot to do with it. Yeah, that guy, I love that guy. Oh my god, I don't blame you, dude. <laughs> Fricky eye? Uh, yes. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, I don't blame you, dude. I would grab that too. And sometimes, I mean, it's just plants that I ha you have for a long time that you grow attached to, right? So, How long have you been doing this? Like I said, not that long. To, 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 at the end of 2018, I went to a couple of uh, cactus shows, and then the pandemic started and then it just took off from there. Right, right. all this side is what I, I just brought from my last trip. This? Oh yeah, I brought this too. <laughs> you brought seedlings from, from your trip? Yeah, because these are the Oibo type. I don't know if you know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They have a, they're gonna be a little bit like this. See how, it's not a, like a, a regular Cochabayanos. Yeah. They have a little bit of more texture. Yeah, that's nice. Is that how you pronounce it, Oibo? Yeah, well, that's how I pronounce it. I don't know. I mean, all these words are Japanese, like Kiko. I think Kiko means turtle. Yeah. You know. And then, so this is what you brought back from your trip to Thailand? Yeah, this, this little corner right here. Oh, that's awesome. So you got Turbany Carpus Alonzo Eye. What is this? I was gonna ask you, man. <laughs> I didn't even know. It looks like, I mean, it's a turb, right? Yeah. I just seen it at one of the, I went to a show, at the last minute show, and then I seen three of those. And I grabbed and see one, two, three, right there. Oh, okay. Two, three. Oh, no, I don't know what that is. Especially looking at that one. That one looks, they might be hybrids, bro. You know? I oh, you got a bunch of Alonzo eyes. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be a Japanese type. They told me if you look at the tubercles, they're a little bigger than usual, but I don't, I don't know, it's, it's still the same thing. I mean, it does look a little fatter, but it's a, it also could just be super juiced, you know? Yeah. Hard to say. That's a, that's a pretty nice haul, bro. Pretty nice haul. All right, greenhouse part two. So what is the story with this greenhouse here? This greenhouse is whatever I find something I like, I just buy a lot of it. <laughs> nice. Because if they, for a reason I, I can sell them, I get to keep them. That's one. Because I feel like if they don't, if I wait and don't buy them, then uh, I won't find them later on. <laughs> yeah, I hear, I definitely feel you on that. And I'm lucky to have the space, so. So you got Susan A, Euphorbia Susan A's here. Some pretty nice looking super Kabutos. Pygmyo Sirius Biblii? Yes, I really like those. I think. The flowers on those are fantastic, dude. Nipplianus, I love that one. Yeah. And that's Kruger Eye, variety Kruger Eye, I think. Yeah, because there's like two different types. This is the other kind. See, this one has, <clears throat> so you can tell the, the way they, they, they're different because this has an apical bloom and this blooms, see how it's blooming out of the aerials? Blooms oh. from the side. Yes. See, that's Nippolianus variety Nippolianus, and this is Nippolianus variety Kruger eye. Okay, I gotta write that down. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. I just, yeah, because a lot of people, I, I just go by whatever they, I, I just, if I like the look, that's, you know, I, I might not even know what it is, I'm gonna get it. Got some seeds going here? Yeah. What yeah. are you growing? Uh, a lot of Areocarpus, Estrophytums, some of the variegated stuff that I, that I have my collection nice so you you and i both kind of got into the softer succulents first yeah and i still like them a lot it's just that for me i'm glad that she likes it because then i don't have to take care of them <laughs> you know oh man it looks so cool with the water in there and so she's got these just under shade cloth they are fine with the cold yeah, they, they actually, they look better in the cold. They, they turn more red, pinkish. Whoa. 
That is beautiful. Yeah, they're gorgeous. They still are gorgeous. I mean, that was that was for me. It was this stuff first, because I'd be walking through like you know, I'd like at the hardware store or whatever. I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna go check out the plants, and then I'd walk out there and I'd see something that looks like this, and I'd go, wow, that is trippy looking. Yeah. And that's how it started. I just looking at plants and going, that is trippy looking. And then, then you find the thing that gets you and hooks you in, and that's how it goes. I mean, like, dude, what is that? That's a plant. <laughs> yeah. Looks like something you could catch. It's weird because yeah, that the, there's a guy that created these ones, and we didn't know he lives here in Fallbrook. Really? <laughs> yeah, his name is Dick Wright. He's oh, like, I've heard of that guy. Yeah, he's like 90. He should be like 96, man. <laughs> We're in the soft succulent shade house. Where this is where how I got started with my collecting. So I think this is probably a good spot to end the video, bro. What do you say? Yeah. Good Peace. Time, man.